Well, joining us now is David Ireland, author of The Weapon of Prayer. He's also senior pastor of Christ Church in Montclair, New Jersey. Dr. Ireland, thanks for being with us My today. My pleasure, Andrew. Appreciate Thank it. you. You know, so many Christians know about prayer. Yes, it's important. We like to talk about it. I'll be praying for you. Right, right, right. But why do we sometimes seem to really not engage in it? Do we view it as difficult or what? I think there's so much mystery and mystique around it that we seldom spend the time to really unmask it, understand what it means, and how to use it as indeed a weapon that God's given us. So how is it a weapon? A weapon is anything that we use to outwit, to overpower, overcome an opponent. And in Luke 22, Jesus said this to Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith doesn't fail. And so the wheat uh, was sifted in olden days, was shaken up on a sieve. The kernels would fall through the holes and collect it. So they used the chaff, the, the debris, the rocks, those things would be thrown away. What Satan desired to do was to shake up Peter's life so that the essence of who he is as a man, as an apostle, as a Christ follower, as a leader, would just be thrown to the wayside and he would be a shell of a person. And so Jesus said, look, Simon, Satan is trying to hinder you from becoming what God has destined you to become. But then Jesus' response was, I have prayed for you. So in other words, I've used the weapon of prayer to protect you from this attack and this assault that's been coming against you. And so that's one of the key issues. <clears throat> a lot of times when, when we think about praying, we're not thinking about picking up a weapon. Maybe no, no. we're feeling like it's an obligation, but that's not the case. No, it's not. I mean, it, prayer is a dialogue that we have with God. It's not uh, religious chatter. It's not uh, using some type of Elizabethan English. It's just normal conversation with God. When we direct it as a weapon, we're still speaking to God, but we're asking God to do something unusual. In fact, one of the things I always say, Andrew, is that sometimes we limit God based on our metaphorical perspective. The Bible uses metaphors for us to understand God. For example, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. John 15, Jesus said, my father is a gardener. There are two metaphors in that verse of verse one is that my father, so God is a paternal perspective. He, he has children, he raises his children. And as a gardener, he looks at us then as plants that he plants in specific areas. He planted you in Virginia Beach. He planted me in New Jersey. And we have specific responsibility in those areas of planting. But we seldom tend to look at God through the metaphorical lens that God's a general. Joshua 5 tells us that the Lord is the commander of the army of the Lord. Hence, he's a general. When I pray then, knowing that God's a general, my prayer takes on a whole other dimension that praying, when I only look at God as a shepherd, limits me. So when I open up my mind and understand the big breadth of who God is through the biblical teaching, then I say, okay, God's a general, which means he has soldiers, which means he's, he has an army. And I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm a soldier. Yeah, okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah, excellent. No, I mean, that's how we need to view it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm in, this, I'm in this army. Here. Yeah. And we have to see it that way. And I look at it as a kneeling warrior. I'm in this army. And that's why Paul told Timothy to, that he ought to do the battle of a soldier, engage as a warrior, as a soldier of Christ Jesus. And so if people could understand that, then we start praying now defensively, offensively, pray tactically. Then we're using prayer as a weapon. Okay, so if we're in this army, and you just mentioned offensive and defensive prayers, explain the difference. Offensive is anything that we pray that is looking ahead. We're trying to make sure we're praying for the promises of God. Anything that moves us into, into closer proximity to our destiny, that moves us into enemy territory to take spoils back. Defensive prayers like Luke 22, anything to protect, to thwart, to defend our locale. Jesus prayed a defensive prayer when he said, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. In other words, I've put a hedge of protection around you. I protected you. Offensive says, Let's go ahead of, we're not looking at a counterattack way. We're not looking at something that is reactionary. Let's move ahead in an intentional way to, to advance. And so offensive prayer is an advancing prayer. <clears throat> Some Christians may say, I'm with you. I'll pray. Yeah. I know it's important. But I don't know about this. What's this fasting stuff? Give us a little bit of an explanation <laughs> of the power of fasting and yeah. its purpose. Fasting just means to cover your mouth. It's for spiritual reasons. We turn our plate upside down. Let's not eat for a specific reason. The benefit of fasting is that it draws me closer to God. It's not an arm twisting method where I'm trying to twist God's arm. God, if I fast, I'm going to twist your arm. I want you to do this. It has none of those manipulative kinds of effects. Rather, fasting is a discipline that says, I'm going to abstain from eating for spiritual purposes. I want to get closer to God. I want to I want to block out the voices of the world, all the noises that's going on, and for a period of time, close down my eating so I can draw closer to God. And it's a spiritual exercise. And some, some say when you fast, it's a prayer of the soul. And so you're really just refocusing your attention is one of the Absolutely. things. Absolutely. 
How, how do we reverse this prayerlessness sometimes we have? I mean, you say church is a big part of this. It is. I mean, being a part of a local church helps to undergird my life of prayer because when you're in the community of believers, there's a good word called communitas. It's a Latin which means that our shared experience brings us together in a deeper way. And so when we have this common experience of being in a local church together, our shared experience dealing with challenges that we face every day, family issues, issues in regards to our job, the shared activities that we go through, it brings us close together. Hence, I start to become a greater disciple of Jesus because I learned to become a disciple by being with other disciples. And so prayer grows in my life as I'm with a praying community. You know, David, maybe you've heard it. Some of us are just too busy to pray. And there's probably <laughs> nobody busier than you leading this church, but yet you take days out of your schedule just to pray. Tell us. Yeah, at the top of every month, I take two or three days. I go away. Other times I stay home, but I go into this prayer retreat, so to speak. Not that I don't pray the other days of the month, but I spend specific blocks of time feeding myself in prayer. And I always tell people, I said, look, don't fall into the trap of having spiritual HIV, high indifference virus, where we get all apathetic. Our immune system as warriors becomes crippled. We become impotent spiritually and unable to fight the good fight of faith because we've not given ourselves to prayer. And in 1 Samuel 12, 23, Andrew, a very interesting verse where Samuel said, far be it from me, speaking to the Israelites, far be it from me to sin against God by not praying for you. So prayerlessness is sin. It's a whole new way to look at it. Yeah, it? it really opens our eyes. And so in order to really have a life of prayer, you have to set a time of prayer and set you know, a place of prayer and set an agenda of prayer. And when we go through those kinds of specific intentionality, then prayer becomes something that becomes easy and becomes a habit. So if prayer is not our first, dis or not our first love, make it our first discipline. Mm, great information. If you'd like to learn how to maximize your prayer life, this book will help you do that. It's called The Weapon of Prayer. And it's available wherever books are sold. Dr. Ireland, thanks so much for being My with pleasure, us today. My pleasure, Andrew. Thank Great you. Great to have you.